Hi folks, this is an audio commentary on pages 68 through 72 in your London and Stone text, a short course in photography. Um, page number 68 talks about an average scene and uh, photographers do communicate with each other and they'll say that what they were photographing was of average reflectance. And that's not a new term to us. Uh, we've talked about a grayscale and sampling a grayscale. And in an average reflectance scene, you will find white and black and light gray and dark gray and medium gray and all of those different things. So part of your decision making when you are setting up a photograph is to evaluate, do I have average reflectance or do I have an outlier? And that would be a scene that's either too light or too dark for a light meter to meter correctly. So even though you spend hundreds of dollars on a very high-tech piece of gear, the light meter is susceptible to making errors with certain kinds of non-average reflectance subjects. So these two pages, 68 and 69, are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the histogram at the bottom of page 68 shows you that an average reflectance subject will span the entire poles white to black. There will be something. We don't know what the mountain range looks like, but as long as there's some data at each end and all through the middle, we're going to say that's good exposure, good average exposure. Okay, so the top of page 69, it talks about using your camera, which has a reflected light meter, and that is reading the light that is bouncing off the subject and entering into the camera. Uh, then we move to a handheld scene and our photographer has an off-camera meter. Very important that the ISO on the camera and the ISO on the light meter are the same. Otherwise, you're going to get garbage in and garbage out. So if you ever get a hold of a light meter, make double, triple sure that the light meter and the camera have the right ISO, the same ISO. And right there, he's standing next to the camera and pointing at the subject. Now, the bottom one shows an incident light meter. And if you look very, very carefully, you'll see a little white dot on top of the light meter that he's holding in his hand and that's a diffuser dome. And that diffuser dome is picking up the sunshine that is falling on it, like he's measuring the light falling on the subject and coming up with an f-stop and a shutter speed. That's probably the more precise version. If I'm photographing somebody's artwork and I want to try and have the best exposure and the best color rendition, I would use an incident light meter. Turning the page to page 70, we're now talking about the outlying types of subject matter. These are non-average reflectance subjects. So what we can end up with, let's say in the second paragraph here, you have a snow scene. 
Well, the meter is going to assume that the subject is 18% gray. I don't know why that happens, but that's the way the meter is programmed. So if you shoot a picture of a snow scene, the snow may look a little dingy. It may look a little gray. And your um, workaround, which they talk about in the high key subject, give one or two stops extra. So this is where you may use your exposure compensation. Or you can put your camera on manual and open up the aperture one or two stops. Um, same problem over here on the uh, right hand page where we have a huge black wall, black auditorium or whatever. The camera is fooled and it's going to give you the wrong exposure for the person. So in that case, when you have a dark subject, now photographers have nicknamed these two types of subject matter. The first one was a white horse in a field of snow. That's a high key picture. Add extra exposure. So there's a little poetry there. If, you, if your subject is not average reflectance, it's like a white horse in a field of snow. You take your meter reading and then add two more stops of exposure. The other one is if you have a black cat in a coal cellar. <laughs> we don't have coal cellars anymore, but if you have a dark subject in a dark area, then you're going to pull the exposure back one or two stops. Now, uh, one of the simpler things to do, and we're turning the page to page 72, Backlight is a real thorny problem for taking pictures, especially of people. The light meter gets all fooled. So one of your um, uh, solutions is down here towards the bottom. And that is, if you're ever not sure of the exact exposure for a portrait, you say to your portrait subject, Excuse me for a minute while I enter your personal space. I need to take a close-up reading of your skin tones. And so, in order to uh, really get the right exposure, if the background is very bright, you need to move the camera in close and then make a note. What is the f-stop? What is the shutter speed? And then when you pull backwards, if those numbers change, you need to put them back to what they were for your close-up readings. So I'm going to let the textbook fill in the rest. Uh, that was the commentary on pages 68 through 72. And write me if you have any questions.